Good morning and welcome to the Core Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is light and dark. And um, it should be an interesting conversation as we look at light and dark as natural cycles of nature that that help us to come into even fuller expression. So before we get started on this Christmas day, Merry Christmas to all of you who celebrate. Uh, let's take a minute or two to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, and creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together. Vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure, the motion, the tickling and tingling when you stop. And allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now, into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, 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 welcome. Good morning, Rosalyn. Merry Christmas to you too. Um, and to everyone else who's joining us. So um, I think it, also in addition to the holidays of the season, the, the um, well, Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, Kwanzaa, all the, all the other holidays that are occurring at this time of year, one that we don't talk about that much is um, the equinox. And um, this is like the balance of light and dark. And, and I just thought it would be pretty awesome to start talking about the natural cycles, our planetary cycles, and, and how those planetary cycles are kind of a metaphor, or maybe not even a metaphor, but an indicator or or a, a um, reflection of the cycles of light and dark that we experience in our own lives and the renewal that comes uh, when we come into a cycle of greater light and the the inner focus that occurs when we are in a cycle of deeper darkness or, or going inward. Maybe we can look at these as inward and outward flows of energy. So um, it's interesting, you know, with Christmas coming after the... Um, the equinox that um, you know I'm just gonna hold on one second when when we I've got myself a little bit confused here I think um Give me one second. So when we talk about um, the change of the seasons, what 
what I, I got myself all twisty around. So when we're talking about the uh, the winter solstice, sorry. Um, when we talk about the winter solstice, we're talking about how we are coming into emergence of light, which is, it's really interesting that the coldest part of our winter occurs after the winter solstice. But um, when when we're talking about the transitions, the, the where we're coming into uh, greater, longer days and um, shorter nights coming into the light, this this we can we can be thinking about it in terms of our external expression and um, a, a wave outward. And it's interesting that the winter solstice occurs before the coldest time. Um, and yet, the light is emergent, yet we're moving outward uh, or be beginning to make that transition into greater light. And at the same time, in the coldest part of winter, we are kind of hibernating if we're if we're in temperate climates, right, where there's this, the change of season. So at the same time that the light is emergent, there's also this inward hibernation. And it's almost like the energy is building, the energy of the emergent light is building and building and building until it comes forth into spring. And um, we we come into greater bloom. On the other side of it, in the summer summer solstice, we're at the height of the light, and in in the midst of the summer, before the hottest part of the season, typically, and there's still all this energy moving outward as the light is is dimming or um lessening for in our cycles so it's it's almost like there are two waves if we can think of this uh, this is just sort of emerging in my mind at the moment but i'm wondering if if this is a metaphor that's going to work out we get to see but um as we as we are having the wave of our personal internalization, the light is building. As we have this personal externalization, you know, the, the heat of the summertime um, is, is lessening. Uh, or uh, the heat itself is building, but the light is lessening. We're still out and in engaged in the world with this outward flow while while there's a contraction at the same time. So it's almost like sine waves that are intersecting, kind of intersecting one another and creating perhaps some kind of, um, energetic balance. I, I'm wondering about this. Here's Jewel. She's dressed for the holiday with her little bow. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, you see her bow. Um, anyway, I, I'm wondering how we can utilize these, these waves of energy, the, the, personal flows that kind of lag behind the seasons a little bit and how we can 
optimize that light and dark. Uh, I, I was listening to a podcast with Aubrey Marcus and um, Matthias Di Stefano and <laughs> Jewel, uh, Roslyn says warm snuggle hugs, Jewel. She's been, thank you, thank you, Roslyn. She's been very snuggly um, last night and, and this morning. She's not generally a snuggle cat. Anyway, um, I was listening to this podcast and it was talking about light and dark forces but it was it, it, they were they were calling the darkness evil and um i have i i think that when we define evil it's sort of an absence of light um i i don't know i mean we can empower evil but it's absence of of connection like a deep 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 disconnection but anyway going back to this notion of of um dark and light they were also talking about enlightenment and i thought this was really interesting that um they said or matthias Matea said it's not the goal is not enlightenment it's harmony and I thought because we keep we keep cycling through lives through um, cycles light and dark, and he was likening our being to a tree where there's a season when the tree flowers and there's a season when those flowers fall, but they come back. And um, that this is sort of the cycle of life, maybe not our individual lives, but the cycle of life. And that the, the awakening also goes through its cycles. If I was, if I understood correctly, I thought it was interesting, you know, that, that civilizations go through their cycles, the rise and the fall. Um, we go through our lifetimes, the, the youth to old age. Uh, we go through these cycles of bursting forth, building, building energies, and then those energies contracting. And I wonder if um, we can think of the light and the dark as this wave of expansion and contraction and the playing with the seasons that's that's kind of syncopated in our um in our experience and in our expression the expansion and the contraction and how if we are alert to the natural cycles we can we can move with them in greater harmony rather than resisting the the light or the dark so i know for myself um winter I know winter is the favorite time of year for a lot of people. Traditionally, it hasn't been for me. Um, and that's, you know, the, the, my body hasn't enjoyed and I consciously haven't enjoyed the cold in the past. And um, I'm not a winter sports person or haven't been, who knows what will happen going forward. But anyway, so our conversations, our own resistance to the seasons, to the darkness, to the cold, to the heat, to the light, whatever, 
whatever it is that we have our resistance to, um, that is creating a, a disharmony, an imbalance within us. And what does it mean to create this balance? So balance is not, we, we tend to think of it as a static thing, but when we're balancing, it isn't static at all. It's constantly readjusting. It's, it's kind of a very dynamic motion. And um, when, when we can find a comfort in that constant correction, that constant balancing, we're, we're keeping our body, our being present and responsive to what is going on in life. Um, in, it, I have, um, I, I work out with a trainer and uh, one of the things that he has me do is balance on one foot and the reason he does that or what he says about that is that the body then is is activated is engaged is um trying to con is constantly correcting constantly adjusting to find its balance that the balance itself is not a static state. That even within the, the attempted stillness, there are micro corrections that are occurring at every moment. And if we think about meditation, most of us in meditation are drifting out of a singular focus and then recognizing that and coming back in, coming back to balance. And finding our, our course correction all the time. So there's an activation and an, and an engagement. So Rosalind says, in the absence of leaves, the tree is still a tree. Exactly. In the darkness, there is still light. My awareness is using comparison. So is my experience. Just a collection of different past conditions, comparing, reflecting, and adjusting. Yes. So um, in the darkness, there is still light. I heard a wonderful, wonderful description of someone speaking about a near-death experience they had had and how they went into this blinding darkness that was brilliantly bright. And um, I thought that was, that was so interesting. I used to have a client who would say... Uh, there was they were in nothing and I said well what's the nothing is it a black nothing is it a white nothing what what does it look like and they said I can't tell and so isn't that fascinating that when we get to a um that kind of extreme space that darkness and light are one in the same and the truth is that there's a greater whole that encompasses the darkness and the light, right? Even, even when um, we experience nighttime, it's daytime somewhere else here, right? And so when we can move to this place of harmony 
we can see the darkness and the light and what unifies them. And we can be that that unifies it. We can be the tree that is still a tree when it has leaves and when it doesn't, when it has flowers and when it doesn't. Um, we, we can be present to the essence of being that tree. And so we are not, neither the darkness nor the light. And we may have experiences of darkness and light. But one defines the other, defines the other. It's the movement of yin and yang, you know, where the the light moves into the darkness, which moves into the light, which moves into the darkness, which moves into the light. And it's these cycles that give us our um our sense of change and dynamics and time. And oh, Rosalind, I'm so glad you gave this example. Rosalind says light and dark being different sides of the same coin. So I I was speaking with a client who gave gave me this beautiful awareness is that a, ki a coin doesn't just have two sides, it has three. It has the heads, the tails, and the side, or the middle. And the middle is what unifies it. And the coin is not complete without the middle that connects the heads and the tails. So we, we are the connector, we are the capacity or the capability of, um, of harmony, of uni unity. We, we are the unifier. When we step back from the polarities of our experience that, that we, exist in our essence beyond those polarities. We are the unifier of those polarities. And so how can we use the light and the darkness, the the solstices, when when there's this balance, there's still that dynamic of change, right? There's this equilibrium, but then um the equilibrium is also changing within within that equilibrium there is the the movement into and out of that equilibrium and um we we are always capable of bridging that balance, creating that balance. And how we can do that is through a lack of resistance, through allowing ourselves to be truly present. And um, as far as, uh, Rosalind, you were saying, my, my awareness is using comparison. So is my experience, just a collection of different past conditions, comparing, reflecting, and adjusting. And I'm wondering what happens, what can happen if from that place of harmony and non-resistance, we can start to experience not the past, but we can start to experience the present in a way that is an invitation into the next moment and the next moment and the next moment. So moving from that space of harmony into a um, an expansion and a, and a broader expression. So light and dark, light and dark, and it's always it's always there and. 
um, our focus kind of defines it. And as I'm thinking of that, what occurred to me is, well, what's in between is gray and, um, or maybe what's in between is the rainbow. So when we find, maybe when we find that place of harmony, it acts as a portal that opens us into a, a universe of color. That's what's between light and dark. That's what's between black and white. It's not, it's not gray. It's all the other colors. And um, that we can access all of those, perhaps from a place of harmony. So Rosalind says, is the practice to be a conduit to channel whatever is asking to be expressed, ways to develop sensitivity, ability to discern. I'm thinking that is the practice. If you know the the practice is being present, and when we're present, we're not defined by our past and by our beliefs, right? We're we're in that space beyond light and dark or the uni unification space. And um, as far, I think you said it really well, I think what, at least what I am intending in my evolution is to become a greater conduit to channel whatever's asking to be expressed to be able to give myself to that and ways to develop sensitivity and discernment, we have the ability to listen more closely, I think. Um, and what that looks like is being present, being aware of our internal conversations, being aware of the callings of our heart. And that can allow us a greater discernment. I think being sensitive to that requires a willingness to listen and, in, and do listening actually listening, setting aside time to listen, to notice, to notice what's arising, to be allowing ourselves to slough off the patterns and beliefs and identities that have constrained us in such a way that it's obscured our ability to hear and see and be present. So whatever form of meditation there might be, whether it's looking at a candle, whether it's watching your thoughts, whether it's watching your breath. So Rosalind says, look closer, aware of inner dialogue. Exactly. Listen and discern what's arising and letting go of old patterns that no longer serve me. Exactly. Exactly recognizing the patterns as patterns, not as who you are. We believe that we act as if our patterns and our behaviors are who we are in our essence. And that's simply not true. And we can notice when, when we recognize that that's the case, that there is a an essence, a presence that we are that transcends all of that, that that encompasses all of that, then it expands our ability to be that conduit, that channel, I think, because we we have no more attachment or we've lessened our grip on all these things that prevent us from seeing and hearing more clearly. I think the thing is to hold that intention 
consciously and deliberately, especially when we find ourselves in interactions to a, be able to sit solidly with that intention. So anyway, I, uh, I think that's it for today. Merry Christmas to all who celebrate and um, let us let us use the cycles of the seasons to be aware of the contractions and expansions that we experience on on a minute to minute by basis even. Rosalind says, thank you for the topic and being here this morning. Rosalind, thank you for being here this morning. I so appreciate you and, and it's a gift to have your company and that of anybody else who joins us, everybody else. And um, all the best wishes. And I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel and my Facebook page. And um, as always, it's just such a deep, deep, deep privilege to be able to share with you and explore together. So until next time, so much love to you.